There's nothing worse than a woman who acts sexy and is very satisfied with how, se- like when she's got that look like, oh, I'm being sexy right now. You know I am. It's like, uh, oh. Uh, that's, it's that's so bad. forth. That's like a comic going, hey, man, I'm dangerous. I'm edgy. You know what I mean? It's the same just skin people can't, crawl. People can't handle oh. it. Oh, when a girl tries to make a sexy face in bed, when she's like, you know, like, eh, oh, fucking get off of me. Get away from me. <laughs> One time, my girl, this girl that I dated in college, who became my girlfriend for a little while, the first time she came to my apartment, like our first like date, because in college, that's a date. Uh-huh. Uh, we were on the couch. And I was really, I was in a play with her, and I was really funny in the play, because I had, like, the funny part or whatever, and I had really been charming her for a long time, so when we finally got to my house, we were on the couch making out, and she stopped, and she was like this, she was, like, smiling, and, like, that's creepy, her shoulder, and I was like, what, I go, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm swooning. (laughs) (laughs) Is there anything (laughs) fucking worse than that? Well, I mean, just, I swept any her sort up, of I like guess. an emotion, either complete lack of it or too much of it, and I just, I just want to leave the room. I liked it when she said it; it was nice. Oh, that girl I was telling you about that one time, <clears throat> I was trying to have phone sex with this girl. I'm like, what are you doing? You laying in your bed? She's like, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I literally just put the phone down on my lap, like, oh god. I was having phone sex with a girl once, and I go, "Yeah." She goes, "She goes, what do you want to do to me?" And I go, "You want it in your ass? You want me to put it in your ass?" And she goes, "Well, do you want the honest answer or the phone sex answer?" <laughs> I was like, "Can you just say yes, stupid? You're across the country. It's never gonna fucking happen." Uh, <laughs> An idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I think if a fuck what I asked her, I would I would break up with her right then. <laughs> you told a story once on the air, and. uh it it makes me laugh every time I think about it. Where you said you were dating some girl, and she invited you over, and she was trying to be like sexy for you, so she opened the door oh, and she yeah. was wearing like oh, and you were into like did she I, thought did, you were into jazz, like weird acid jazz. Did I did I did I tell that on this show though? I don't know. I don't want to repeat <laughs> I don't remember, myself. I don't know if you, I think it was actually uh, I think it was O and A. You told it on, but dude, I get the visual from that story where she opens the, the girl in the towel it. yeah yeah and she was wearing like she wanted to be sexy so you said that she had shoes on all but right, she was all wearing right. like terrible black flats oh, it, was, it was brutal it was brutal <laughs> i was dating this girl all right i gotta tell the story now for uh first time listeners everybody else take a bathroom break i uh i basically you know i was banging this broad over there right i was i was hooking up with Bang. this girl uh-huh. and um it was great, man. We, we were, you know, we were having a good time or whatever. So she basically had a. This is how I met this girl. It was a great angry fuck. The first time I met her was, I was calling up to find out what my my uh, my, my my lodging was going to be at this college gig, and she was just being a jerk about it. She ended up sticking me in a hostel, which I had no idea what that was. And I showed up, and it was like me and some fucking Arabian sword swallower right. in like these bunk beds, right? So I was fucking pissed, right? And she, we already had, like, we kind of had, like, this fuck you, fuck you without saying it on the phone. So when she, she kind of had this attitude with me when I first showed up. So she booked me and this other comic who was missing part of his ear. Ooh. That's what I, yeah. And this right. really, I don't know why, dude. What, was I going to ask him? That's exactly what I should have <laughs> said. Happened to your I should have literally pointed at his ear going, ooh, <laughs> why? <laughs> no, I don't know. He's missing part of his ear. So I was like, wow, that's weird. You know, so he had to have, like, really, like, 70s length hair, right? So he ends up going up on stage, right? She's all proud of herself. But that pissed me off. She booked two comedians, right? Mm-hmm. So I could have taken half that fucking money and actually had a decent place to stay. Long story short, the fucking dude with the fucked up ear goes up and has a fucked up set. He's <laughs> bombing. And immediately uh. she has this panicked look on her face, looking at me like, now I got to come in and save the day. So, of course, I went up there and I had to follow this fucking guy who stunk. I went up and I killed. So immediately she wants to fucking bang me, but she couldn't. Because we're in Chicago, blah, blah, blah. So we end up, why the fuck did I go? I went literally went back like 200 pages in the story. Let me get, let me get to the point here. So, All I'm, right. so I'm banging this I'm banging this broad. Wait, why couldn't you fuck her that night? Oh, she, her fucking niece showed up, and I had a bunk bed. And she had no place to go. It was terrible. And you, okay. can just, you can just feel the vibe. So then when did you end up fucking her? She ended up calling me. She called my stupid college agent who gave her my home phone number. She's like, we're definitely going out. We're definitely partying. Oh, she came to New York? Yeah, she okay. like moved here, right? So she was working oh, okay. at one of these universities here. And uh, <laughs> she was like in charge of the dorm. Like she checked in on all the kids. So I guess one of the things was you couldn't have any sort of uh, 
couldn't have any candles. There were certain things that you couldn't have in your dorm room, any sort of paraphernalia. If you did, you got in trouble. So she wanted to role play sex. She wanted me to be that guy, come over <clears throat> to inspect her room to make sure she didn't have any of the stuff there that she shouldn't have had. And her whole thing was she wanted to come to the door and nothing but a towel and high heel shoes. And, of course, I was going to go in there, find shit that she wasn't supposed to have, and then she would, of course, have to be disciplined. And, right? like, you're showing up and going right into this. It's not like you guys were hanging out. No, no, no. We'd already been going out for a while. I completely fucked oh, up the story oh, by oh, telling her okay. bullshit, right? Okay. So, anyways. So, basically, by this point, we're, like, three three months into the fucking relationship, right? I tried to get this thing going, and it's just, it's not going good. Like, she said she was into jazz, so I brought her, like, this John Coltrane CD. I tried to be a good guy, but... Well, we're basically, she, we get into this fight on the phone, and I'm going over there, and it's like, I'm thinking the whole way right over, like, I got to break up this girl. What the fuck am I even doing with this shit, right? I come up to the door. I knock on the door. She, she, he opens the door, and I'm already have this big breakup fight. She opens the door, and she's standing there, and nothing but this towel, okay, and these high heel shoes, but they weren't, they weren't sexy shoes. They were like this sensible shoe and literally had like an eighth of an inch Fucking, you know those, those shoes you wear so you don't have back problems as a chick? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what she's wearing. And in the background, she had put the CD on, the jazz CD that I got her. This is this big romantic moment. And I bought her this John Coltrane CD. I didn't know anything. So it's like this jazz that's like... <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's playing that, and she's standing there. She looked fucking ridiculous. And I was literally, I was going to burst out laughing. But I knew if I, if I laughed at her in that moment, you know... That I was, I was going to ruin her for the next guy. I was literally, she was going to be, like, the next time the guy right. tried to touch her, she'd be fucking in the fetal position, drawn with, like, a purple crayon or something. Right. So what I did was basically, I had to play it off like she had, like, like I was so surprised. Right. Because, dude, my dick was literally slumped over on my fucking leg. Like, you, whatever. You're on your own. So I had, to, I had to act like, like, I was so overwhelmed. And the first thing I did when I got in there was I got the fucking CD off. I shut that off. <laughs> And then I was sitting there, and she was all proud of herself. Like, she had totally, like, seduced me. And she was sitting there with her fucking legs crossed. Do you know when they swirl their foot around? Uh, and I'm looking at that was the toe, was stupid the shoe and she with the fucking shoe on. Was it hanging off, or was it... Was it I, no, it was still on. It was snug, and it was on. And she was all proud of herself. Like, she was this sexual vixen. And, like, I just... Ugh, I wanted to stri a smother her with the fucking towel. Somehow, I got, it, I got the shoes off, and then I had to basically splice together... Every horrific porn scene I had ever seen to some... I just bent her over and just I did it like a job. I literally got out of there. 